The following program, The Russ Belleville Show, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on The Russ Belleville Show are their own and the Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize uh, our, uh, our To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Rough Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. I... Now, here's your host, Radical Russ Belleville. We love it. All right, good day, Jokers and Tokens, and welcome to the show. It is Monday, February 24th, 2014, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. So glad you could make it to the show today because we have exclusive video to bring to you. We filmed it Saturday. In fact, I should say Brian the Red filmed it Saturday at the Oregon Cannabis Industry Association's Business Seminar. Representative Earl Blumenauer, my congressman, speaking on marijuana issues and taking questions from the crowd gathered there to make the best of Oregon's new medical marijuana dispensary industry. We've got it in three parts for you. The first two parts will play at the end of this hour and the third part will play at the beginning of hour two. So stay tuned for that. There's some great stuff, some standing ovation material from a U.S. congressman on the legalization of marijuana. But before we get to all of that, I've got to make sure that everybody understands the truth out there. There was a report, you know, left wing Larry came down the stairs to tell me this morning a report that was that came out on marijuana.com they picked it up off of nationalreview.net a report that governor hickenlooper in colorado was going to submit a bill that would expunge the records and release from prison uh people that were convicted under marijuana offenses that are now legal in the state of colorado um, unfortunately it's false uh, that is not true i called the governor's office this morning asked about uh, verifying that fact and uh, the woman answering the phone seemed pretty exasperated she said, no, no, the governor is not. <laughs> so like she'd answered a few calls on it this morning. So it is not true. Make sure everyone knows that. But for the news that is true, former drug czar Barry McCaffrey came out and said that the momentum for marijuana legalization is irreversible in this country. <laughs> And uh, we're going to talk about that in Behind the Headlines, so stay tuned for that. That's right after our 420 Radio News, where we've got a new poll from Ohio on marijuana legalization. A Northern California dispensary suing the IRS. Uh, show Me Cannabis in Missouri is going to delay legalization until 2016. We've got updates on Maryland, Tennessee, and Georgia bills. And a PolitiFact review on Florida's medical marijuana amendment. And a firebombing at a Southern California dispensary. We'll tell you when. Also on the show, it's uh, Roots Monday, so Bacon Dan will be calling in. He's got some music for us today coming to you from Tom Waits. So we got a great show today. Stick around for the Russ Belleville Show. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. 
There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the best way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at omarfigueroa.com. 420 Radio, your ticket to Seattle Hemp Fest. Cannabis Outreach Collective is an alternative health and wellness option located in Gladstone, Oregon that serves patients in the Portland area and beyond. We are a full-service alternative health and wellness collective accommodating patients with natural, organic, holistic, and homeopathic remedies, nutritional guidance, advice, education, and medical cannabis fully in accordance with Oregon OMMP law. You can find out more about Cannabis Outreach Collective on Facebook at COC503 or by emailing Cannabis Outreach Collective 503 at gmail.com or by telephone at 503 853 1319. Check out our menu on Weed Maps and visit Cannabis Outreach Collective today. This is your 420 Radio News for Monday, February 24th, 2014, brought to you by the National Cannabis Coalition. I'm Russ Belville. Another U.S. state, this time Ohio, is registering overwhelming support for medical marijuana. According to the latest Quinnipiac University poll, 87% of Ohioans favored allowing citizens to use cannabis with a doctor's recommendation. No demographic group registered below 78% support. Ohioans also support legalization of recreational marijuana by a slim 51% majority, but there remains a 15-point gender gap between men's support at 59% and women's support at 44%. Four out of nine Ohioans have tried marijuana and 83% of Ohioans agree with the president that marijuana is no more harmful than alcohol. Another slim majority of 51% disagree that the use of marijuana will lead inexorably to the use of other harder drugs. Republicans and the elderly were the only demographic majorities to believe in the so-called gateway theory. A solid majority of 76% would be uncomfortable riding in a car with a driver who had consumed a moderate amount of marijuana. One Northern California medical marijuana dispensary has rejected settlement negotiations with the IRS to take its federal tax penalties to court. Canacare of Sacramento is being punished by the IRS over a $800,000 tax penalty based on the federal 280E tax regulations, a Reagan-era statute designed originally to prevent cocaine kingpins from claiming drug-dealing business costs as tax deductions. Because of 280E, the IRS would not accept $2.6 million in standard business deductions for salary rent, and operating costs, even though it did allow Canicare to deduct the cost of its marijuana for sale. The IRS did offer the dispensary's owners, Brian and Lynette Davies, a settlement of $100,000, which they refused, calling it, quote, buying protection money, end quote. On Tuesday, the U.S. tax court will hear the Davies case, which the Davies attorney said, quote, amounts to a de facto prohibition against medicinal marijuana dispensaries and is tantamount to a criminal prosecution, end quote. Show Me Cannabis, the group that submitted 10 different marijuana legalization proposals for the state of Missouri, has decided to wait for 2016 for a campaign for a statewide legalization initiative. John Payne, the group's executive director, told the Associated Press that internal polling still showed 51% of the state's voters opposed to legalization, with only 45% supporting legalization, far, be far below the 58% national support for legalization in the latest Gallup poll. Missouri's Governor Jay Nixon agreed, appearing on a CNN 
Biden program this weekend to say legalization in Missouri was, quote, a bridge too far, end quote. However, the governor seemed more open to medical marijuana, saying, quote, I think folks are starting to see if there are things the medical community can help on and our legislature may consider medical marijuana, end quote. Payne says Show Me Cannabis will focus this year on proposed decriminalization legislation and that 2016 will feature better voter turnout than this November's election, where state auditor is the only statewide office to be decided. Marijuana decriminalization and legalization bills have been filed in Maryland, while medical marijuana bills in Tennessee and Georgia are on the ropes. Tuesday, lawmakers in Annapolis will meet in a Senate committee to discuss a proposal to make possession of 10 grams or less a mere civil infraction with a $100 ticket, and another proposal to legalize possession of one ounce and cultivation of six marijuana plants. Heather Mazur, an openly gay Maryland delegate running for governor, is also openly supporting the legalization proposal, saying that opening the conversation about marijuana is much like coming out of the closet. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, legislators still perceive marijuana as a recreational gateway drug, and even those lawmakers offering measured support want to see the FDA approve any marijuana treatment before they sign on. And in Georgia, lawmakers are learning their attempts to get CBD oil to epileptic kids are stymied by the fact that the federal government won't supply Georgia with marijuana plants that are still illegal to cultivate in that state. Will doctors in Florida be able to write marijuana prescriptions for patients suffering from an itchy back? Florida Senator Don Gates has criticized the forthcoming Florida medical marijuana amendment on the November ballot, saying it, quote, doesn't require a physician writing a prescription, and it can be for purposes as specious as having a back that needs to be scratched, end quote. Now, PolitiFact, a nonpartisan political watchdog, has rated his claim as half true. Indeed, PolitiFact notes doctors will be writing recommendations, not prescriptions, since drugs in the federal Schedule I, like cannabis, cannot be prescribed. However, political PolitiFact abolishes Senator Gates' idea that a mere itchy back could earn so many medical marijuana recommendation, noting that, quote, the ballot language sets a higher bar than that, noting that the condition must be debilitating, end quote. This has been your 420 Radio News for Monday, February 24th, 2014. I'm Russ Belville. Transcripts of 420 Radio News are available exclusively at the National Cannabis Coalition. Visit ncc420.com to download today. When we come back, we'll go behind the headlines and take a look at recent comments from former drug czar Barry McCaffrey to the Washington Post about marijuana legalization. You're listening to the Russ Bell Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. starting up a medical cannabis business, you don't just want any attorney. You want a fired up lawyer who understands the needs of cannabis consumers. The law office of Lauren Vasquez is your fired up lawyer for the cannabis industry. Lauren Vasquez knows the details of California marijuana law from both a personal and professional angle. Lauren Vasquez rose from the ranks of college normal activist to become one of the Bay Area's best marijuana lawyers. Visit her website, firedupmoyer.com, or call 1-855-MMJ-LAWS for more information. That's 855-665-5297 for Lauren Vasquez, your Fired Up Lawyer, or email firedupmoyer at gmail.com. The number again is 855-MMJ-LAWS, 855-665-5297 for your Fired Up Lawyer, Lauren Vasquez. Lauren Vasquez is an activist attorney you can trust. Call today. Let him bring in the beat. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel produces quality custom designs for t-shirts, hats, and other apparel. Handmade Apparel is the official design shop for 420 Radio, The Russ Belville Show, Ganja John, and Cascadia Concentrates, among many clients who rely on Adam Hand for everything from short-run custom projects to full-run clothing lines. Adam's meticulous designs are individually crafted and screened in vibrant high-definition color. Visit handmadeapparel.biz to browse the selection of handmade gear or to get a personal quote for your own designs. Handmade Apparel, a proud supporter of 420radio.org. Let 
Drug Truth Network, Century of Lies, with Dean Becker from Houston, Texas, every Monday at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. GMT, right here on 420radio.org. Welcome back, everybody. 15 after the hour. Time to go behind the headlines on a Washington Post story that did a really good job chronicling the evolution of marijuana legalization and the politics behind it. But buried deep in the story was a quote from former drug czar Barry McCaffrey, where he says that the legalization momentum in this nation is irreversible. It was just amazing to me. He shocked the mainstream. Here's the quote. The momentum to treat marijuana as a legal drug is irreversible, end quote. McCaffrey was the head of the Office of National Drug Control Policy during President Bill Clinton's second term from 1996 through 2001. And he believes that the popularity of marijuana legalization lately has intimidated authorities into silence on the issue. He said, quote, the politicians, police, judges know this is bad policy, but they don't make a peep. So we're going to end up with impaired surgeons and air pilots. We're just accepting another drug of abuse, end quote. Because, you know, surgeons and pilots have no access to pot now. <laughs> but, you know, once it's legal, while well, hell, they'll be getting high every day of the week and then going to work. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, McCaffrey's also upset that the mainstream media won't take seriously the politician, polices, and judges who appear on air to support the status quo of the drug war. He says he won't make a peep against legalization on TV because the networks, quote, only wanted a retired idiot general who didn't understand that marijuana was harmless and filling America's jails, end quote. That, of course, hasn't stopped Barry McCaffrey from making money opposing legalization through his consulting firm, B.R. McCaffrey & Associates, LLC. McCaffrey has delivered at least two presentations on drugs and crime over the past two years. Now, one year ago, Barry McCaffrey was singing the same tune about how these poor elected officials are overwhelmed by, you know, a majority of the voters who supported legalization. This time in Washington state, back there a year ago, he said, quote, I think local political leadership in the state of Washington was intimidated and irresponsible or uneducated, end quote. Uh, that's what he told the Yakima Rotary Club. Of course, He's blaming elected representatives who had nothing to do with passing a citizen marijuana initiative, <laughs> whatever. And at that event, one Rotarian at the event made some joke about, you know, we're going to supply cookies and brownies and Twinkies and that we'll be able to find. We're not going to ask who smoked marijuana. We're just going to bring out a plate of Twinkies to find out. Right. And of course, the pot smokers would go right for the Twinkies. So uh, McCaffrey was actually offended by that. <laughs> more more than we were. Uh, McCaffrey found that kind of casual attitude toward uh, marijuana reprehensible, explaining, if you're an employer, this is a quote, if you're an employer and you think it's okay for family members and employees to use drugs, you've got to screw loose, end quote. <laughs> uh, now, this differs greatly from a quote you hear all the time on our show five years ago. Barry McCaffrey was speaking at the Council on Foreign Relations, and he didn't seem to have any problem at all with adult, adults who want to smoke pot. He said, quote, since I'm not in public life, I actually don't care. And he was answering, somebody asked him, you know, why not just legalize drugs? And he says, since I'm not in public life, I actually don't care. I care about sixth graders through 12th graders. If you're 40 years old and you're living in Oregon and you have 12 giant pot plants in the back of your log cabin, knock yourself out. End quote. Fortunately for me, I'm well into my 40s and I live in Oregon. I guess I just need a log cabin now. So McCaffrey is an interesting study because he's always had a problem with the growing truth about cannabis. Uh, when he was drug czar back in 96, he attempted to punish California doctors for merely discussing medical marijuana with patients. And that threat didn't diminish until the Supreme Court reminded him about this little thing called uh, the First Amendment. <laughs> Can't interrupt doctors' free speech rights. He also once claimed that the famously marijuana-tolerant Dutch had twice the U.S. murder rate. It's actually about a fourth. That dare, that drug abuse resistance education, the cops coming into the classroom, was successfully keeping kids off drugs. Even though a 10-year follow-up study found, quote, the absence of beneficial effects from dare, end quote. And he once said, quote, 
Medical marijuana is not science. This is not medicine. This is a cruel hoax that sounds more like something out of a Cheech and Chong show, end quote. And of course, his lasting legacy as drug czar was using $25 million in taxpayer money to pay Hollywood scriptwriters to include anti-drug messaging in TV shows like ER, Beverly Hills 90210, and Seventh Heaven. Rented idiot general indeed. All right, we're going to celebrate here the uh, irreversibility of marijuana legalization. It's 20 after. Get your smoke on. We'll be right back. Met that funny reefer man, a reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, a reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. Support the Russ Belleville Show. Text the word Russ to 420-420 and connect with the National Cannabis Coalition. You can also send 10 bucks to the Russ Belleville Show right from your smartphone. That's Russ to 420-420. You're listening to Radical Russ on the Russ Belleville Show. Hey, how's it going? My name's Will. I don't work at a used record store. I don't own an iguana, although I'm sure they make great pets. I don't have dreadlocks or play the acoustic guitar. I can remember quite well, thank you, and no, I don't constantly have the munchies. When 420 comes around, I've still got 40 minutes of work left. I've never hit a girl on a bike with my car or shot my friend with a shotgun. I've never had to apologize for letting a girl I was watching drown in a pool while I was getting high because... Duh, I wouldn't be getting high if I was around children. I'm a regular guy who works regular jobs, just like the majority of all Americans who use marijuana occasionally and responsibly. My name is Will, and I'm normal. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Joker Tunes. The best in Pod Save 420 music from around the web. Today is Roots Monday, featuring the blues, country, folk, and jazz music that birthed the modern sounds we enjoy today. Now, sit back and enjoy your daily Toker tune. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's 23 after the hour, and uh, we got Bacon Dan on the line, and uh, I know he can't be feeling so great because. My goodness, the USA got pummeled by Canada in uh, both hockey, women's and men's. Are, are you torn about that? You know, the Canada-USA thing? Oh, yeah, I'm so torn. I've been celebrating nonstop since Canada won. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what happened to the USA getting blanked 5 nothing for Finland? What did they, they suit up? Did they lace up skates for the Denver Broncos or something? What happened there? I, I'm starting to think so. I mean, it was <laughs> it was embarrassing, but there's there's a lot of controversy attached to it. I'm just glad to see... Uh, Canada being the first uh, NHL era Olympic hockey team to go back to back gold, um, especially with Carey Price, uh, Montreal Canadiens in goal. I mean, it really made for just a very, very proud moment. Yeah, and the women's team just kind of collapsed. They were up like 2 nothing, and then, you know, it was only a few minutes left, and Canada ties up, and then wins in overtime on the women's yeah, side. Yeah, that was awesome on itself. I mean, so proud of them. I couldn't be more proud, actually. Right on. And uh, we had a good time the other night. Uh, Saturday night we saw Emulator, which is them, the band from the Ed Foreman show. They were playing 8-bit video game music. I got to say, dude, it was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed. It was very cool. And thank you so much for coming down and supporting it, Russ. It was just a great time. Um, 
yeah, I mean, there's just been a lot of good stuff going down here in Portland, and I, you know, I don't think I could be happier right now. And the rain's back today, so actually, the weather here in Portland is very appropriate for today's song, too. Yeah, what a perfect segue. We've got a song from Tom Waits today. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, this song, people will, you know, if you've had kids or you like to smoke and watch animated movies, you'll recognize this song from Shrek 2, which is a weird time to actually hear a Tom Waits song, but... It's a great, just, it's a dark, I mean, I know it's kind of surprising Tom Waits doing a dark song, but <laughs> it's, uh, I love it. It's a really nice one. I mean, if you're smoking something heavy, I'd recommend from TGA Genetics that I picked up at Brightside PDX, Doctor Who, a very nice heady strain that just makes you sit back and go, ah, oh, yeah, this is dark, but I dig it, man. So, yeah, it's just a really, really fun song. I've had, I've been listening to this song, God, for over 10 years, and I never have gotten sick of it once. All right, here it is, Tom Waits with a little drop of poison. I like my town with a little drop of poison. Nobody knows they're lining up to go insane. I'm all alone. Smoke my friends down to the filter But I feel much cleaner after it rains And she left in the fall That's a picture on the wall She always had that little drop of poison devil make the world where God was sleeping you'll never get a wish from a bone another wrong goodbye and a hundred sails that deep blue sky Belleville Show. Text the word Russ to 42420 and connect with the National Cannabis Coalition. You can also send 10 bucks to the Russ Belleville Show right from your smartphone. That's Russ to 42420. You're listening to Radical Russ on the Russ Belleville Show. Darling, your mud's This is your brain. This is heroin. This is what happens to your brain after snorting heroin. And this is what your body goes through. 
not over yet. This is what your family goes through. And your friends, and your money, and your job, and your self-respect, and your future. Any questions? Medical Marijuana Radio with Larry Love from Santa Fe, New Mexico, every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. GMT, right here on 420radio.org. Reforming America's prohibition laws cannot happen without relentlessly and directly engaging our lawmakers and other elected officials. The Russ Belleville Show keeps you on top of all the latest developments at the federal, state, and local level with our government at work. Big kudos go out to Brian the Red, who attended most of this Oregon Cannabis Industries Association and got us some fantastic video. We're going to start off with my congressman, Representative Earl Blumenauer. Radical Russ here at the Oregon Cannabis Industry Association <laughs> seminar that's going on here at Occidental Brewing. We are at the base of the St. John's Bridge here in North Portland, and it is literally standing room only inside there. Get a quick shot there of the of the inside. You can see that uh, it's literally full, standing room only. They're going over contract law. The new dispensary law is up for grabs there too, and many, many experts from all across the cannabis industry are here to uh, let the people know what's happening. And and the agenda here, full agenda, Brian's been here recording all day. We'll give you some of the highlights from some of the uh, most popular speakers there. Uh, Amy Margolis from the uh, law office of Amy Margolis is here. We've got corporate and securities law, federal marijuana policy with U.S. Representative Earl Blumenauer, who's been a stalwart fighter for our rights there in the United States. Congress, uh, employment law, intellectual property law, product liability law, tax and accounting, uh, the new H- House Bill 3460 compliance. How do people keep in compliance if they've been running a pseudo dispensary to this point? How do they get legal? That's all the kind of questions they're answering here at the Oregon Cannabis Industry Association. You can check them out, OCIA, their OR Cannabis Industry on the web, and uh, we'll be talking more to them as well. So uh, thanks for joining us here for our special coverage Saturday, kind of a misty, cool February day here in Portland, Oregon. Until next time, take care of each other. Talk. Proud, excited to have you. Thanks, Amy. I have a certain amount of trepidation uh, making a presentation on these issues anymore because the pace of change is so rapid, and I haven't uh, checked yeah! my, my iPad for a couple moments to find out. <laughs> What barrier has fallen? Uh, what new information is out? Um, having been involved with this issue, as some of you know, as a child legislator, I voted not just to decriminalize marijuana, but to actually legalize two plants back in 73. Uh, uh, having had an opportunity to watch the progression of this issue over time, uh, I am uh, stunned, excited, and pleased. Uh, part of me wants to say, um, what took it so long? I mean, because a lot of this is not new information. Um, but when I volunteered uh, to my friend Barney Frank, when he announced uh, two and a half years ago that he was going to be moving on, Barney, as you know, was on point for us with his interesting partner, uh, Ron Paul, uh, legislatively. Uh, I, I volunteered to, uh, to shepherd it along. I've had some ideas over time that we ought to put on a full court press, uh, but I had no idea how fast things would be going. Um, I'll just touch on two or three things and then I would like to uh, just spend the rest of the time in conversation, observations and comments that you have or questions that I can help clarify. What we set out to do a couple years ago was to engage a broad cross-section in Congress on these issues. Uh, We have a matrix here that I think uh, uh, my uh, district director and political guru, Willie Smith, who's been deeply involved in this, Willie, wave, there he is. Um, We have the matrix of uh, 11 bills. Uh, Most of them, you will note, have bipartisan sponsorship. And what we tried to do was cover the whole range of issues. I have been working with Jared Paulus uh, to basically treat it like alcohol. Legalize, regulate, tax, 
get on with life. Uh, we have legislation uh, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, which uh, should have never happened in the first place, uh, to legalize the use of industrial hemp. Uh, and as you may have noticed, we had uh, in Congress in an uh, otherwise egregious farm bill, about a D minus piece of legislation, uh, we had approved an amendment on the floor of the House with bipartisan support uh, to allow the agricultural institutions to do research on industrialized hemp. We've got from the administration a uh, clear indication that uh, as the President Obama says he's got bigger fish to fry, uh, that the 22 states that have set in motion something to deal with industrial hemp and the cultivation of it are ready to go. Uh, and that legislation has, I think, 60 bipartisan co-sponsors. And isn't it fun to watch Mitch McConnell in a competitive race in Kentucky? Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader who is the least popular incumbent senator running for re-election in America is a champion of legalizing industrial hemp. Um, things happen. In addition to putting together the framework, I just spent uh, some time um, analyzing for myself what the issue is in developing uh, this little report. We call it Path Forward. Uh, it's available online on our website. Uh, I've made it available as an open source document. Uh, so far, only uh, my friend Jared Polis has taken me up on it, but I've made it available to anybody in Congress who wants to use it for their own purposes. They can add their name to the cover and try to get some objective information out uh, to the general public. And uh, we welcome any uh, advice. We've got a lot of experts in the room. If you think I've missed the mark someplace or there's new data, uh, please, by all means, uh, share it with us. We've got a little cheat sheet, uh, the path forward that we use as we're meeting with folks. Um, but the range of things we've tried to focus on is to give people a sense that this train has left the station. Yep. It started, I would say, in 73 when we decriminalized marijuana in Oregon and the sky didn't fall and big cracks didn't appear in the earth. Uh, sun rose uh, every morning and set every evening. Next big step, 96, state of California, voters approved medical marijuana. Uh, even though, let's see, Schedule 1, no therapeutic uses. Um, Californians decided otherwise, and since then we've had 21 states in the District of Columbia, mostly with a vote of the people, who've decided to move forward. And we have, as you know, over a million people who are legally using medical marijuana across the country. Uh, it's going to be fun watching what happens in Florida. Uh, almost 700,000 signatures submitted. And I see two polls that show 65% uh, or more support, including a majority of Republicans. The first southern state looks really optimistic for the fall. Of course, when it comes to Florida and elections, we're never quite sure. Um, uh, but you've seen this movement taking place. Alaska may be the next state to vote this summer to legalize. Um, if we are successful in putting a good, solid measure on the ballot in Oregon, it's going to pass this fall. And then I think it's essentially game over because we're moving forward, great opportunities in California. The medical marijuana continues to move. Uh, and people are dealing with the realities that this is a legitimate business, that we're going to deal with crazy stuff. You know, if we finally got, we didn't even have to get our legislation uh, in terms of uh, changing the banking regulations, it finally dawned on them that if you care about money laundering, tax evasion, robbery, having people paying their taxes with tens of thousands of dollars in shopping bags of $20 bills, it's not smart. <laughs> and somehow we were able to work, uh, we've had these conversations before, but finally uh, with 
uh, treasury with justice, it looks like we're going to turn that corner. The next, and I will tell you, it was interesting for me to have Grover Norquist, Republican activist, anti-tax guy, with me at a press conference on our legislation to deal with the 280E and allow legitimate businesses to deduct legitimate business expenses. Grover's there. That's a signal. Um, and I think, again, that's something we're going to be able to do in the short term. So, a broader framework, medical marijuana, being able, well, when the president has said he has bigger fish to fry, but as you know, there are 93 U.S. attorneys, some of whom are still frying uh, some of these smaller fish. Um, we've got a DE, uh, we've got a drug policy office that is clueless. I mean, some of you are familiar with my sort of low-key legislative manner. <laughs> uh, always been noted to sort of be soft-spoken and patient and um, use it as a learning process. But having this guy, and he was actually, believe it or not, sworn under oath, uh, because that's what the Republicans do on this committee, took an oath, tell the truth. Excuse me, sir. What's more dangerous, methamphetamines or marijuana? This guy could not answer, would not answer. Um, how many people die from marijuana overdoses? <laughs> well, I think we all know the correct answer is zero. Not that hard to compute. In fact, if somebody died of a marijuana overdose, it would be big news. We'd know about it. There would be flashing banners. There'd be two new committees formed. <laughs> Made for TV movies, and Ronald Reagan would come back from the dead. <laughs> the illusion, the illusion to the number of emergency room admissions that are marijuana related. Hmm. <laughs> How many emergency room admissions are tobacco related, alcohol related, food related? How many people admitted to emergency rooms were clothed at the time? I mean, get a grip, people. Um, I've asked a couple of my friends who are emergency room physicians about this, and the answer here again is zero. That's not what drives people to emergency rooms, although people may have been wearing clothes or have smoked a joint in the last week or, you know, have had a beer. This, but trying to make this into some sort of spooky, scary reason to, per, to continue to have a flawed, failed, expensive, unfair, and unjust system. Um, I think it's reprehensible. Uh, I truly... We've got more with Representative Earl Blumenauer from the Oregon Cannabis Industries Association Seminar this weekend. Part two is coming up next after this break. Got to pay a few bills. And we'll play part three at the top of our two Toker Talk Radio. So stay tuned. More with Representative Blumenauer coming up next. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. It's simply business. 
It's simply business, you know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. It's simply business, you know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. This is Radical Russ encouraging you to take a look at the Weed Blog every day. Johnny Green and the staff at the Weed Blog are on top of all the latest developments in the fight to end marijuana prohibition nationwide. You can even get the Weed Blog on your smartphone by installing the Weed Blog app for iPhone and Android. If it's about weed, it's on the Weed Blog, including my original writing. So don't delay. Read the Weed Blog today. 420 Radio, your ticket to the High Times Cannabis Cups. Five of the last nine major party candidates to run for president, three of the last nine vice presidential candidates, and the last three two-term presidents have all smoked pot. Marijuana, the gateway drug to the White House. This is the Russ Belville Show. And now more with Representative Earl Blumenauer at the Oregon Cannabis Industry Awards. That it's attitudes like that that are contributing to young people smoking marijuana and not taking the admonition seriously. If an official under oath can't give a straight answer, how are they going to believe anything they say? It is, I, I don't want people to have kids access to marijuana. I have no interest in it myself, although I tell you, if I had uh, in, involved with the symptoms of chemotherapy or somebody in my family, I'd say yes, try it. But the point is, this ought to be a matter of individual choice, informed individual choice. We ought to focus our attention on making sure we know what the heck is in some of the products. We ought to be able to focus to make sure that bad actors, people who would give it to kids, don't get away with it. And we ought to promote better public understanding. The analogy to me, uh, for me to tobacco is compelling. We have dropped the use of tobacco in the United States almost two-thirds since I was in college. We didn't arrest people. We didn't prohibit it. What we did is we did research. We dealt with control of product. We taxed it. We regulated. And a free society has reduced consumption of a highly addictive and, and destructive substance, dramatically. If we can do it with tobacco, which is more dangerous and more addictive, isn't it time that we do this with marijuana? <laughs> Talking about gateway drugs, you know, if it is easier for a junior high student to get a joint than a six-pack of beer and nobody's checking ID when they sell the dope, <laughs> you know, there's no license to lose. And how easy is it for somebody who really is a sinister type to say, you like this? Let me, let me give you something else. And the profits flow 
who like Mexican drug cartels, not healthy for us for a whole host of reasons, when instead we have an opportunity to tax, to regulate, to inform, to fight addiction, to turn our criminal justice system in areas that it is more appropriately focused, Stop arresting two-thirds of a million people a year for something that the majority of Americans think should be legal. And the outrageous racial disparities. Uh, and the, the case to me is pretty compelling. It's not that there won't be problems. It's not that there aren't issues um, uh, in terms of impaired driving. But wasn't it interesting, the article uh, in the uh, uh, New York Times this week? That, that talked about, yeah, it's not good to drive when you're impaired with marijuana. But, you know, it appears as though being driving under the influence of alcohol is worse. And the combination of the two could be really, really dangerous. So why don't we have an honest conversation about this and work together to deal with impaired driving, to deal with the public education, to deal with the enforcement. And when we tax and regulate, it's going to save our nation, I would say, $100 billion over the next 10 years by the difference that we will have in not having futile prohibition, jailing, arresting, enriching the profits of the drug cartels and taxing and regulating legitimate businesses that will deal with the new products, the new opportunities, what we can learn in terms of the refinement of medical marijuana. Let's research this stuff. It's, anyway, I got the high sign. I got, three, I got, minutes, I got three minutes. I shouldn't have taken that long, but it's hard for me to to not sort of get a, a little cranked up about this because it's just the more work I do, the more I see what's going on, the more it seems that this should be a no-brainer. And I will say, uh, in closing, uh, we've put it over to you if I haven't exhausted completely your time and patience, that I really appreciate the hard work that's been done by people in this space. People who've pushed back, people who've worked against the odds to develop their own product line, people who've been trying to influence public policy over time. Um, it's helped create a condition that I think in the course of the next five years is going to be revolutionary. We will be a better society. We will be a safer society. Our kids will be better off. Uh, we will, I think, solve many of these public safety issues, and we can focus attention on issues of addiction and substance abuse to help lots of people, rather than spread misinformation, misallocate resources, and wreck lives. I appreciate the chance to uh, be with you here, and I welcome any comments or observations or questions if you have any. and more reasonable on this, but I, I do think the key in either the House or the Senate is just getting people to focus on it. Because when you focus on it, it's, it's nonsensical. And it really is a serious distortion. It's not fair to legitimate small businesses. It encourages people to fudge on their taxes if they're going to have punitive tax rates. That's not a way. We, we rely on voluntary compliance in this country 
for our tax system to work. And when you have something that is so unfair and so burdensome, um, I have no doubt that there are some small uh, business people that may not give the benefit of the doubt to the government. Um, part of what's been uh, an issue is that we've been waiting for tax legislation with this grand design for a great bargain, which just is wheel spinning. Um, if we moved anything that was significant, I think we could have attached it as an amendment. Standalone legislation is tough. But I think Ron um, is uh, experienced. I think he's likely to look for smaller singles and doubles rather than a grand bargain. He's very good at that. And in that case, I think grafting it on uh, is a good prospect. Thank you. Is there any indications? Tell me who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name is Peter Gross, and I'm from Ashland. Will you stand up so we can all hear you? Oh, I get the one on the ones? <laughs> <laughs> only you. Uh, are there any indication from Justice about their opinion of what's happening here in Oregon? They seem to be cool with Colorado, they seem to be cool with Washington, things in Oregon and Alaska are moving rapidly, so are there any indications from Justice on them changing their opinion? Well, banking is a um, I think you're, you're watching uh, a, a sea change within the Department of Justice. Um, it, the conversations we had, and this was even before Barney left, we had some folks in and, and dealt with uh, uh, deputy attorney generals, and you know they're they're really caught in a tough place. Congress has uh, should fix the law and get them out of the situation where they feel like they have to choose which law they enforce. Now that said, they do it all the time. Selective enforcement is something that is. Uh, uh, you have to do it. If, if we prosecuted everything where everybody crossed over the line, uh, you know, we would just completely break the system down. So they exercise selective judgment all the time. Um, I think we're, uh, but we're getting this sorted out. And the success that I anticipate that we, I hope, have in Oregon and in Alaska uh, accelerates that process accelerates that process. And advocates around the country um, are helping in terms of trying to uh, uh, be serious about helping in terms of a regulatory and enforcement framework, in terms of uh, trying to uh, share their experience about the implications of regulation and tech. So uh, I, think, uh, I think we're moving along. I hope that, they would, that we would just reschedule it. Um, been holding that back, waiting for a more appropriate, but, but the notion that somehow the administration couldn't do anything on its own cried out for a response. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Here's the statute. Well, yes, where, you can. Where would you say that is? That was going to be my question. I mean, you're on the topic. It, it, it changes, because that is the sea change, right? Uh, well, that would, that would uh, give us 90% of what we want. Um, it's Let's just say it's, it's moved up in terms of uh, the awareness. It's on the radar screen in a way that it wasn't. And there have been people who just simply didn't know how the law, how the law worked and that it could, in fact, be rescheduled if there is good evidence. And heaven knows there's lots of evidence to reschedule marijuana. Schedule one? Give me a break. There's five executive orders. That Schedule one, give me a break. That's a U.S. congressman, Representative Earl Blumenauer from right here, my district here in Portland. I get to vote for him every two years by mail. It's a beautiful thing. Folks, thanks for joining us here on the Russ Belvale Show. We've got more with Representative Earl Blumenauer, more questions from the crowd coming up in hour two in our Toker Talk radio segment. So stay tuned. And uh, you'll get more of that. Plus, we've got more video, more presentations. We'll have highlight clips from the Oregon Cannabis Industries Association Seminar, marijuana, Medical Marijuana Business 101, that took place at the Occidental Brewing Company. Big thanks to National Cannabis Coalition, to Oregon Cannabis Industries Association, and all the folks that made it possible for us to cover that event. That's all the time we got for now. Thanks for joining us. For Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers.
This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you 